What's up everyone, it's Jake here and welcome back to Almost Vintage Style. Today we're doing a slightly different video uh, because I have hit 5,000 subscribers here on YouTube, which is kind of cool actually, or at least I think it kind of is because it's taken a long time. I've had this channel actually for almost a decade or something, at least seven or eight years. Start off as a pomade review channel if you didn't know that. Um, and it's morphed into you know what it is today and who knows where it's exactly going in the future, but yeah. Uh, I think that's actually kind of cool. Um, I've been trying to get more consistent with my uploads and videos and try to get as much information out there as possible. So hopefully you've been enjoying that as I get my thumbs stuck in my leather jacket belt loop. Um, so yeah, and I to celebrate, I want to do a Q&A and I ask for questions on Instagram. And a lot of these are actually really, really good questions, which some of them people have asked me before. And so this is going to be pretty in depth and I think there's gonna be a lot of information here, which I think is really cool. So please don't just click off just because it's one of those same old Q&A videos, but, and also actually real quick. So as a channel update, um, I'm gonna to try to do some more boot comparisons. The only boot I really have left to like review or do an overview of as of right now is the Grant Stone Garrison boot because that's the only boot I have that I don't think I've really covered yet. Um, in about a year, I will be able to do a 10 year review of my Lofgren engineers, which is crazy. Um, and then, uh, yeah, mostly besides that'll be boot comparisons and I wanna do videos on like, you know, differences between Goodyear welting and, and stitch down all that stuff and the misinformation people have about that because I think a lot of the basic overviews about that stuff is incorrect. Some things made about veg tan versus, you know, not veg versus chrome tan and combination tan and what makes something a work boot, that kind of stuff. But I've pretty much reviewed all the boots I own at this point. So you're not really gonna be getting more boot reviews unless I get stuff sent in for review because I also don't plan on buying any more boots, to be honest. I really don't have any plans to buy boots right now. I have what I want. Um, I haven't bought a pair of boots in over two years. So um, that's not changing anytime soon as far as I can tell. And uh, so you're gonna get a lot more stuff on jackets, leather jackets, t-shirts, jeans. I wanna do a lot more stuff with like jeans and chinos and trousers and things like that and style. So if you don't mind the shift towards that, like I hope I'm doing the big hat video coming up, I wanna do the big t-shirt video, stuff like that. That's what you can probably expect going forward. Um, and you know, stuff about boots, but and maybe updated reviews, but that's kind of it. I'm not expecting to do a lot of boot reviews upcoming. Anyway, uh, but hey, that could change. So let's get into the questions, which a lot of really good questions here, honestly. I wasn't even, I was gonna skip this. If I didn't get good questions or not enough of them, I would have skipped this, but I actually got good questions, so we're doing it. First one, what do you think of brands like Bronson Manufacturing, Militora, Nonstock, Bob, Dong, etc.? So these are like kind of the cheap Chinese heritage brands. So, um, I'm not a fan, personally, because I feel like a lot of them are kind of skeevy in terms of their information. So like, Bronson especially, they kind of act like a British brand, even though they make their stuff in China, and everybody knows they make their stuff in China, but they just don't, it doesn't even say it on the website. I've looked, if maybe it's there, it's really hard to find, and I hate that. I really hate that. I think that's dumb, and I think that's messed up, and you're trying to look all cool and quality and heritage when it's the made in China thing is not actually necessarily an issue for me, right? Like I love my flame pandas or I don't have flame pandas anymore, but I love flame panda and I've had flame pandas. I love the Quan Shoemaker boots that I reviewed. I think Motive Manufacturer is amazing and they're making in China, but they're like saying, yeah, look, we are a Beijing brand. We are made in Beijing. What's up, right? Cool, own it. There's like, and there's levels to made in different places all over the world. I mean, there's sweatshops in the United States too. It's kind of more like what you're being upfront about and, and, and transparency and things like that. And so that's the bigger issue I have with stuff like that. Um, and also like the materials are cheaper. Like if you, they, they, they make like deck jackets, but if you look at what the lining material is, it is not as nice as other brands. Yeah, I understand for some people, like the price is, is very prohibitive with a lot of stuff, but you can go vintage and there are other alternatives. And so that's kind of my issue with that. The t-shirts actually seem pretty okay. Um, but I might try out one of the t-shirts to see. I just, 
It's the lack of transparency. That's what bugs me more than anything else. I don't like that. Like, hey, we're trying to seem like we're just a, uh, we're just as good, but we're cheaper. But if you look at like the materials for the more serious stuff, it's not as good. And we don't know what their labor practices are like. There are brands that will make in Mexico or China or other places that are, you know, much more upfront with like showing what the factories look like and talking to the people who make their stuff and will be very upfront about like not using sweatshop labor. And so then it's, I don't mind, you know, where it's made if that's the case. But a lot of these brands don't do that. And that's what bothers me. And some of them also will just like rip off modern brands and like act like they're not doing that. And that really bugs me. That's not okay. So that's my thought as of right now. Uh, how have the olive waxed Wesco's been? I'd like to see another update. I sold those years ago. <laughs> I actually over dyed them a couple of times in different ways myself. And then even then I didn't like them, I sold them. Biggest issue with those is they didn't fit me very well. The Wesco Motor Patrol toe, as cool as it looks, I really like how it looks. I think the Wescos are one of the better value for money engineers out there. But despite the PNW lack of, you know, nice construction, you know, finishing, um, which is an excuse. There's no reason if I've seen old PNW boots that actually were very well finished. So this excuse of, oh, we're a work, we're bruh, 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 bruh. No, that's an excuse. You can make durable boots that have nice SPI and don't have broken threads and don't have loose every, you know, bad QC. Okay. Um, mine were okay, but I've seen some really bad stuff from every single Pacific Northwest brand. I'm not calling out Wesco specifically. I've seen garbage, unacceptable garbage from every single one of those brands. Stuff that I have never seen from a lot of other makers out there. Okay. Um, so that's an excuse. This is my little rant on PNW over hypeness. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't like them because they just, they, my, especially my left foot, like the toe was tight. I only sized down half a size and they still felt terrible. They never got comfortable. And it's because they didn't fit right. The double midsole, I could have gotten used to. I had that on my flame pan as it was fine, right? But the, the toe box was weird. And I've heard other people say the same thing, like the MP toe on the West Coast just fits weird. And they had the worst heel slip of any boot I've ever had in my life. There was no grip in the heel cup. They didn't feel right to me. So, and I've heard other people say the same thing. I've heard other people, some other people say they fit you fine, they fit them fine. I would love to, if they redid something to make them fit better, I would love to give Wesco another shot for engineers. But right now, no. Um, how in depth should you go to match leathers? Um, I like obviously matching my leathers. And um, I think there are some, you know, non-matching situations that you can kind of get away with. Like, if you're wearing something like it's a gray leather with a black leather, I think that's fine. I think in some cases, if you're wearing like something that's like a true, very red burgundy with black or gray, that looks fine as well. Um, in terms of, but not black and brown, disgusting, illegal, gross, you should be arrested. Okay, no, go to go straight to jail, straight to jail with that, okay? Um, if you, it just doesn't look right. It's clashing. It, it, it looks odd. It's off-putting. Um, I'm not saying it's literally illegal. Obviously, all of this is subjective. People are literally asking for my opinion. Okay, this is my opinion. You do you, do you okay? I am friends with people who mix black and brown leather on Instagram. I'm married to somebody who will mix black and brown colors. Um, not mixing the leather. She doesn't do that. But, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, I'm not like literally, a, I, I don't hate you if you do it, but like I don't agree with it. Um, I can see in some cases if you're going super overboard, like trying to make everything look perfectly matchy, it can be a little too much, but I do, like I'm not going to wear a dark brown belt with a mid-brown pair of boots, for example. I just don't like that. However, at the same time, I have the same, my I have one dark brown belt, or I have a couple, but I don't match them more like I'll wear either of my dark brown belts with any of my dark brown boots okay it, I that if you're going that could go too far I don't want to have like yes yeah, some have a more olive undertone some have a more reddish undertone I'm not matching the belts based off of that or the leather jackets like I some one of my dark brown vintage jackets is more of an olive undertone one of them has more of a reddish undertone I'm not matching based off of that you can but that to me is too much if it's dark brown like a darkish brown it goes with darkish brown fine okay but yeah and 
but I don't want to do like mid brown with dark brown. I, it, to me, it's still too clashing and it looks odd and I don't like it. So yeah, general tone. So like a light brown with light brown. I can see like a light brown with like a mid brown on the bottom. That can kind of work, but yeah, that's as far as I'll go. I don't like to go overboard with making everything be perfect. Um, but like, it needs to be the same, be pretty close. Importance of all other internal construction in boots slash shoes versus synthetic internals. I think this is pretty big, honestly. I care about this a lot. Um, like I, some of the recent boots I've had have been a little more comfortable than I'm used to with all synthetic or some synthetic, but I still don't prefer it. Long term, you're gonna have more comfort, most likely if you go all leather, all organic materials, because it will break in more, it'll mold to your foot more, and it will just be, it'll be more durable as well. So long term, you're gonna have more comfort versus the synthetic stuff. It might be cushier at first, but over time, it doesn't feel as good. Like even just over a long day, if I put on, you know, well, White Cloud is a little unfair because they're just way too comfortable. But like even like my clinch, you know, I wear these all day. These are all, you know, leather and organic materials versus, you know, um, like the Mark Alberts I used to have. I can use those because that brand doesn't even exist anymore. They had some synthetic materials on the inside. It doesn't feel as nice. Um, or the Huckberry boots that I had. After 12, 14 hours, it's going to start to hurt a little bit more for me than these would. And then long term over a year, a year or more, then it's going to get even worse, right? Um, the other thing is it feels sweatier. That's one of the biggest issues with synthetic materials that's not talked about enough is they get sweaty quick. Like my feet feel sweaty and uncomfortable and that also leads to more blisters and your feet stinking. With fully organic or like, you know, real materials, I don't know, I don't, you don't certify I don't know if you certify beef. Yeah, yes, there is organic beef, right? Yeah, but I don't know if you certify the leather is organic, whatever. But you know what I'm saying, okay? You know, this without synthetic materials, um, my feet don't sweat as much. And so they feel much better at the end of the day and they don't stink as much. So it's a much more pleasant experience. So that's another big thing. Uh, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Well, what do you mean? African or European swallow? Uh, Chuck Taylors with leather jackets, yay or nay? Big yay, actually, for me. Um, I tend to prefer boots. Uh, it's just more my style. I like them more. I do have some some chucks or repro chucks and stuff like that. And for a lot of people, yeah, that look is awesome, especially black leather jacket, faded pair of jeans, which I know these aren't faded yet, but I'm wearing them because I want to fade them. Um, and a pair of like white, especially, or black, you know, chucks, chuck 70s, or I wouldn't go with regular chucks. But like, you know, some of the repro chucks or if you can find old made in USA or the made in Japan chucks and stuff like that. Yeah, big time or the main, well, I don't even know if they have the main USA PF flyers anymore. But yeah, big yeah, I think it's a great look, looks awesome. Depending on your style, it's a great look, I love it. Um, I just wear boots more. Do you miss anything about your non-vintage jackets? Great question, and yes, I do actually. Um, I miss everything working and not having to worry about issues. So like with this jacket, like all the zippers have issues, like the teeth are missing, you got these weird problems. It's kind of a pain. Fortunately, the one zipper that actually is good is the main zip, so I can zip this jacket up and down easily. Um, so yeah, I miss everything working on the jacket. It's, no, and that's not a problem all the time, but it is an issue in some cases. Like there's a lot of little things wrong with the vintage jackets in a lot of cases. And also I miss breaking in a new jacket to my body, and I miss the really, really nice Battle Assy and Shinky leathers. I don't really miss other leathers, but like Battle Assy and Shinky especially, and some of the really nice Japanese and Italian veg tan leathers. Breaking those in and like having them nice and new and shiny, I love that, I love that depth of color. I like the bit of sheen that those leathers have to them, like Battle Assy and Shinky especially. I miss that, I do miss that, I do miss breaking them in, I miss the smell. Um, you know, vintage jackets don't smell as nice. Uh, so yeah, I do miss that. It's definitely worth it for me to switch. These just fit so much better and I think they're cooler and the cuts are better for me. Um, and it's just like a fun new journey for me. But yes, I do miss that stuff about it. There are, like I said, I did a video where I just talked about like, for most people, a repro is gonna probably be the better option. Uh, your, what is your most disappointing purchase? 
Uh, the Wesco Engineers were a very disappointing purchase, to be honest. That was a big one. Um, other disappointing purchases. A lot of custom leather jackets have been disappointing. My Arrow was extremely disappointing. That did not go well. Um, it fit me like garbage. It literally fit me like a trash bag. The guy I sold it to, interestingly enough, was thinner than me at the time I sold it to him, and it fit him really well. It did not look like a trash bag on him. So, you know, it's just one of those things where I'm not saying it's a terrible jacket objectively, but it just, the whole experience did not work out well for me, and uh, that was a big disappointment. Another disappointment is I've tried to do some custom jackets recently, and I'm not going to name any names because I like the makers, but like the patterns just as we were making them, they just did not suit me, and that's what pushed me towards going vintage and that was disappointing because I thought, you know, going custom with leather jackets would be a great solution to like the uniqueness of my body. And cause right now I have like a 42 and a half inch chest and a 30 inch waist. So I've got almost a 13 inch drop now. And I figured going custom would be the answer and it just wasn't. And I knew like partway through these processes that it was not working for me. And I was not going to be happy with the end jacket. It just wasn't worth the risk anymore. So that's a big disappointment too, honestly. Um, uh, also, there's been a couple of cases, and I don't want to name names, but I've bought loop-wheeled sweatshirts and t-shirts, and they've had side seams. What? That defeats the purpose. And they might have technically been loop-wheeled, but the, the stores did not say that they had side seams. They just said they were loop-wheeled. Misleading. That's really frustrating. I'm, you know which stores you are. Shame on you. That's really disappointing. That, that honestly made me really mad. So, also very disappointing purchase. Um, otherwise, for the most part, I think I'm ha uh, this. Yeah, that's kind of it, actually. Yeah. All right. Do you like cropped pants or jeans? I don't know what you mean by cropped. Like, you mean like capri pant length? No, I hate that. But otherwise, like, I like my I cuff my stuff, but I try to keep it as pretty close to the bottom as possible. If you could only own three shirts, what would they be? Um, so if we're including t-shirts, then I would have my probably either the Stevenson overall Henley or the like a Mr. Freedom uh, Stanley t-shirt in white. Um, that would be one. The That green, like that mint green right stuff shirt that I have. And then my freewheelers like the standard blue chambray. Those would probably be, if I was including t-shirts, if I was not including t-shirts, just button up shirts, it would be those two. Ooh, what would the third one be? Oh, it'd have to be a white one. So either, like probably I have to find an off-white chambray. So an off-white chambray, which I don't actually have the perfect one. I have a freewheelers one that's a little too formal-ish. I like it, but I want a more casual one. And then the white, chambray I have is from flathead it's way too white it wouldn't last long so i need like an off-white chambray um the greenish kind of mint sage chambray from right stuff and then a light blue chambray though i the free wheelers one i have is really nice i also like the right stuff one i really like the right stuff i think he makes amazing stuff it's the right stuff um okay do you think you'll always live in california if not where else and why uh yes i do think i'm gonna live in california forever um if not, I would love to live in New York City. I would love, love, love to live in New York City. I don't know if I'd ever be able to, but if I had, if I wanted, if I could live somewhere else, it'd be that, or maybe Santa Barbara. I mean, it's also still California, but Santa Barbara's gorgeous. So those would be the other places I would live. But my wife and I are very happy here. There's a lot, there's everything here. It, it's not cheap here, but I mean, Right now, I'd say the, the benefits outweigh the cost. And a lot of people think it's not a great place to wear leather jackets. It's actually a fantastic place to wear leather jackets because it's dry and it actually gets cold in the morning. And uh, it's about eight, uh, honestly, eight months out of the year is leather jacket weather. Because even when it gets cold, it's rarely cold, so cold that you don't wear leather jackets or my wool jackets that I like. So it's leather jacket weather most of the year. And even in every year, invariably, even in July, in the evening sometimes, I can wear leather jackets. So it's actually good jacket weather here. Um, it just depends on where, how close to the coast you live. I live fairly close to the coast. Uh, but yeah, New York City would be big. Um, I would love to live there if I could. I love Manhattan. It's like probably my favorite place in the world, that, Tokyo and here. 
Uh, are there any items you'd add to your summer island outfit? I mean, I would change it now, obviously, because I'd be going vintage instead, but I actually don't know what I would wear. So I do know for sure my desert, my desert island outfit would be these jeans. These are my LV40s jeans because I custom kind of cobbled together the fit with him between his like different sizings and his patterns. And these fit me. These are the best fitting jeans I've ever owned. <laughs> I, when, I, when I made these, he's like, oh, you're basically asking for a Levi's, a women's 701 cut. And I'm like, yeah, I'm basically shaped like a girl. Make these for me. He's like, okay, made them. They fit like a dream. It's amazing. They're so perfect. So yeah, these would be the jeans uh, that I would wear. Still probably an Ecru Henley, um, most likely. And I actually don't know what I'd wear for the jacket. I, I, oh, see the thing is it would probably be the leather and wool panel jacket, the golden fleece one that I have, but that doesn't go with denim. So I don't know what I would do. Maybe the sport clad probably, and then these white clouds, and then my well on the hat. But it probably had to be a different color well on my hat, honestly. So that would be what that would be right now. Um, how do you air travel with your leather jackets? Packing tips. Okay. Uh, biggest thing is I do not put leather jackets in my carry on in my carry on or uh, check bags. If I'm when I'm traveling, if I'm wearing a leather jacket, I will just put it on, and then that's the jacket I wear to in the airport. And so, like the last two trips I took. Um, last three trips I took, whatever jacket I was wearing, the first one was the OA moleskin jacket, I just wore it on the plane. Then I wore my, uh, the blue and, blue, gray, and burgundy sport clad 40s jacket. I uh, just, I wore that on the plane. And then most recently I wore the Vanson to Mexico and I wore that on the plane and I didn't have any other jackets. I just put everything else in the bags. Um, in the past, I think I have worn leather jackets. I just bring, I wear one on the plane and I put the other one in the bag. I just, I don't think it's worth packing a lot of jackets. I would say bring, wear a jacket. If you can layer two jackets on the plane, that's what I would do. And then that's what I did on the way back from New York this year is I bought a vintage leather jacket. So I wore that over the Oe Yafukuten jacket and then took it one of them off and then had the other one still on when I was sitting on the plane. That's how I do it is they, they take up a lot of room. Leather jackets are not space efficient when you're packing. So Try not to pack them if you can help it. That's my advice is wear them. Um, what do you think about unmarked? Unmarked actually seems pretty interesting. Honestly, here's the thing. Uh, the more I've worn some of these like lower priced, more entry level boot brands, the more I realize like in a lot of cases you really don't need more expensive boots. Like the white clouds, I because they fit me so well and they're so comfortable and so well made and so gorgeous, and I, I love Godosan. Um, these to me, like if you go this far are worth it. Um, and also because I love engineers and it's hard to get good engineers that are cheap. Um, and I don't like synthetic materials, but if you get like the balance of uh, like, like, um, like Parkhurst seems really nice. I haven't owned any Parkhurst yet. I really want to try Parkhurst. Um, and I love the Grant Stones and I even like the, um, I forget the name of the brand, but the, the Huckberry boots. If those didn't have the synthetic materials, I would really like them. And if they had a higher and curved heel, like a cowboy heel instead of the, the block heel. Just a few little things would make those fantastic. I don't think cheaper boots are really, like, they're come, I really like them a lot more than I used to when I first got into this stuff. The thing is, my style is engineers. And nobody is making decent, like cheap sub $500 engineers. If somebody comes out with that, I would jump on that immediately and would hopefully they'd be fantastic. So I don't know if Unmarked has synthetic materials. If they don't have synthetic materials and the, the look is your style, they're probably great. Um, I, the big, I think they're made in Mexico. Mexico makes amazing boots. Like the quality of my made in Mexico boots that I've, tried versus the quality of like lower price made in USA boots. The Mexican ones usually are better. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, so I, the biggest thing for me with like any lower price boots is I like woodsman heels and I like, I like engineer boots and I like chunky. Like if you can say like the, these are my wife's flame pandas. I love these. 
I no, I don't see. Maybe Unmarked makes something like this. I don't know, but like most cheaper, lower price makers aren't making something anything like this style, right? Or my wife's Lofgren donkey punchers. Like I want stuff like this if I'm gonna wear lace-up boots. This is more my style, um, and I just the cheaper makers are going for because they're trying to do a mass appeal to a mass appeal audience. They're making like standard you know, service style lace-up boots. And that's just, in general, not my style. The one boot I have that's like that that I've actually been wearing a lot lately is this specific one. This is the Grant Stone um, uh, Garrison boot. And I like these because of the, the very little eyelets, and I like the cap toe, and I like the darker edge finishing. These are going, I wear these with all my wool trousers recently. That's why I like these so much. They're they're getting me more into my vintage cosplay territory, which I like about them. So yeah, I would want something like that, or I wish cheaper brand, the biggest reason I don't have more stuff for the, and I don't need, this is it, I don't need, I will never need another pair like this. I will almost always wear my engineers. So if a brand like Unmarked makes an engineer that's actually good, then yes, I would just recommend people to buy that. I think cheaper boots are very good now, Honestly, and I think the higher end makers are getting worse for the most part while the cheaper brands are getting better So the cost gap is getting less worth it Who has made the best custom belt you have owned my favorite Duke? I love Duke's belts Duke Manti makes the coolest like really nice quality like he gets like really good vintage gems He can actually give you real gemstones as well um, He I love what he makes um, the other good, there's a lot of other good belt makers like Hollows makes some really cool stuff. I love my belts from Hollows and he makes a different style, like cool custom studded and like, like sewn belts that are really cool. Isaac from Pigeon Tree Crafting, if you're into a more modern look, cause his thing is like, especially his, um, his quick release belts. I used to have some and I just didn't get new ones when I lost weight because they're just, to me, they feel more modern because they're kind of a newish kind of look. It doesn't fit my style anymore, but Isaac is awesome and he makes really good belts and they were always really well made and he makes, he has really cool leathers and his custom, like those limited editions he does, he always comes up with like the coolest colorways, with like the stitching and the hardware color and the belt color. Awesome. Like they're really cool. So if you're into a more modern look, I'd say Isaac, I'd say Pigeon Tree is your best bet. I love what he's putting out. It just doesn't quite fit with my, you know, I'm too cosplay vintage-y, right? It doesn't work for me. Um, but if you're not like me, which is most people, I'd say him. If you want the more vintage, like fancy over the top belt, I love what Duke makes. Like every day I'm like thinking of like a new Duke belt I want. Okay, um, have you ever thought of incorporating Native American jewelry into your outfits? Yes. Um, I just don't know exactly where to start with that. I don't know enough about it to judge the quality on that kind of stuff. And I don't like going over the top with jewelry. I actually tend to not like to have anything on my wrists. I kind of have my rings that I wear. Maybe eventually I want one more on my right hand, but that's it. I don't want to, I, two on my left, the wedding ring, obviously. Um, and the, this RJB ring, which I absolutely adore. Um, these are my two favorites. And then, you know, maybe something on my right hand, but that's kind of it. I am actually technically about a little over 10% Native American if you go down to Central America, because I am actually pretty high amount of Central American in my blood. So I don't feel weird about wearing it because I feel like I have enough percentage to not feel like I'm co-opting because I am half Hispanic. And then most of that Hispanic is not Spanish. It's actually a lot of Native American blood. Anyway, so yeah, we're indigenous. Uh, okay, uh, what's next? Um, I already went there. Okay, what's... Okay. Um, have you any vintage suits? No, I don't. I would like to look into them. Uh, one of the guys I follow on Instagram, Wealthy Wanderers, has some really cool vintage suits. He knows a lot. he has some really cool vintage stuff. I think it's one of those things where if I can get try on one in person that fits me pretty close and just get a tailor to barely mess with some stuff to get it right, then yes, I would probably go with a vintage suit. I would like to try them and I, if I can do try on in person for the first time and get the right one, then I will go for that because I do have some really nice Oxford shoes from um, uh, Indonesia. What's, 
I'll put it on screen. I'm sorry, I just can't remember every name from everybody. Uh, I feel really bad that I don't remember his name, but I have nice shoes that I can wear with them. Okay, um, what is heritage? What constitutes it? Are there established standards? Police? <laughs> uh, to me, heritage, I mean, heritage literally means like um, something that's like passed down through generations. Like that's what heritage means, like your personal heritage, right? Like you get your name from your parents, that kind of thing. Um, but heritage, like for brands, means like, you know, long established brands. But the thing is, a lot of those long established brands have gone down in quality or outsourced production or cheapened things to make more profit, right? Or they've been bought by other companies and things like that. So to me, heritage means a an item that has the quality worthy of being passed down. Which is why I don't think Bronson, for example, fits that qual fits that description. I call them fake heritage because a lot of their stuff is not of the quality to be passed down, right? Whereas there's a lot of new makers that technically don't have heritage, but have the quality of being worthy of being passed down. Like Troy O'Shea does not have the heritage, it's not a heritage brand in the traditional sense of the name being passed down and his stuff having already been around forever. But the quality of his stuff absolutely is worthy of being passed down to the next generation. So I consider him heritage. Um, like this leather jacket obviously has lasted. It's from the 1940s. It's 80, almost 80 years old now, probably. It's heritage, right? Um, the, these jeans, they're repros of 40s jeans and they're very well made. And so they are worthy of being a heritage good, right? Same thing with Clinch. Like Clinch is not super old, but they are worthy of being heritage. Roll Club. Grant Stone, Shogoto, Motor, Attractions, Lofgren, none of these brands actually technically have heritage, but they are all quality enough to be passed down, right? And usually it also comes with, you know, you're deriving your designs or your inspiration from vintage garments, usually from the 20s to the 60s, mainly 30s to 50s. But, you know, like Mr. Freedom, for example, again, doesn't really have the heritage and it's not a repro brand designing things that could have been back in that time period. That's what Mr. Freedom does. The quality is there, you know, the authentic, it's authentic to what he, to Christoph's vision. That is also heritage to me, right? I don't think it needs to have a super tight definition. The thing that bugs me is when brands try to act like they're making quality stuff, but they're not, right? and they're skeevy about what where their stuff is made and how it's made. And even American brands can be a little bit skeevy about like, cause again, people have found sweatshops in Los Angeles. So you gotta be aware of stuff like that too. So it's not just the country, it's how transparent is the brand. That's why I try to go with like smaller shops and one man makers if I can. Um, or vintage, right? Cause it's already been made. So you, whatever, you know, downside of the construction has already been paid. So, you know, reusing more than making you know new stuff um okay uh is the heritage community a more positive space for men than other online spaces i would say overall yes have i met people that are absolute jerks who have you know trolled me and treated me like garbage and threatened me absolutely i've met a few people like that i've met a few people that I think just because I make jokes about Viberg and Ironheart have blocked me and, you know, talk smack on me to other people just because of that. Like, there's a couple people, like, I've talked to people in person, they're like, yes, this guy hates you. And I had never even talked to them before. And they just, like, find ways to abuse me online just because I make jokes about Ironheart and Viberg, I think, or whatever. So apparently there's a guy who online hates me because I wear jackets in Southern California. <laughs> so yes, there are people like that that are that much of jerks, but yeah, like my brain just broke like when I heard that the first time. Like when I got like the, the free wheelers, that big wool, that big warm, you know, alpaca line jacket, which I do genuinely wear several times a year because it's so cold in the mornings here. Like I genuinely need it. Like I was getting sick before I got that because I was so cold in the morning um, because my body is adapted to this climate and the guy... I posted it somewhere and he just started like abusing me and then he deleted it and I don't, I forgot to screenshot it, but like just making fun of me. Um, yes, there are people like that. They do exist here. Okay. Um, and that guy knows who he is um, and he should feel bad. But 
And there's another person too that did stuff like that too, that is like threatened me. So yes, it does still exist. And in fairness, yeah, I'm kind of asking for it in a way, I guess, because I put like opinions out there that are controversial, I guess. But I don't like really, like anybody who wears skinny jeans or wears, you know, loves Viberg or loves Ironheart or all these brands I kind of joke around about, like I will like you in person. <laughs> like I like, I want to wear a pair of Ironhearts. Their rises are too low for me. That's the biggest reason I don't have an Ironheart jeans. They're right. They don't have anything that's high enough rise. Uh, I love, I, I make fun of D hen fans. I, I love my D hen beanies. I make fun of, um, Viberg, but if Viberg ever brought back a 2005 last full height engineer boot that isn't in Halloween Chrome Excel, I would buy it immediately. Right. So I don't dislike Viberg either. I just make jokes about stuff and people get too sensitive. Uh, but overall, what I say, it's more positive than other communities I've been a part of. Probably, like I've been getting into coffee and some of the coffee people are actually meaner than they, I would say the heritage guys are. Um, I've been into other like, you know, niche communities and stuff like that. And I would say, yeah, probably in general, heritage Amakaji is overall better. Yeah, I interestingly, I would say it's a more positive place than most others, which is kind of cool. Why did I spend over 3,000 Australian dollars on Shogoto boots? Because they're the best boots in the world. I mean, literally, and I, I've been bra you know, banging on about Shogoto's boots for years. And you know, anybody who's gotten them just, yeah, agrees. They're amazing. There's nothing quite like them. So yeah, no, it's worth it. He's the only like top end maker that hasn't had some sort of issues since he's gotten big. He just, He's plugging away and his boots are every bit as good as they ever were. All the other higher brands have either gotten slightly worse in quality, and I'm not going to name names, or they've had some issues with how they're fulfilling orders or communication problems or sizing issues. He's the only one that hasn't had that happen to him yet. The only one. Hopefully that doesn't happen to like NF Bootmaker because he's hasn't, I mean, he's getting big and he's, his stuff looks amazing and I hope, you know, so I'm not including him yet because he's too new for had to have that issue happen, but like other everybody else has had some sort of issues even flame panda um, not quality wise but with like the delivery and like communication and all that stuff so yeah goto's wait time has gone up but it's clearly communicated is there an example of the cheaper option of something uh where the cheaper version is actually better yes i would say absolutely there are examples of that and yes i know i'm biased grant stone uh grant stone uh, the quality control and the consistency of quality is better than on some more expensive brands. Um, I'm not going to name names, but yeah. Uh, honestly, even Red Wing. Like, the qu base quality isn't always necessarily better, but, like, they don't have completely garbage boots. Like, the the level of consistency with Red Wing is higher than it is with P&W brands. PNW brands, like, yes, the internals are great, but, like, sometimes they will make something that is, like, literally just broken, and you cannot wear it. I've, I've had people DM me this stuff. Uh, other examples would be, like, some of the denim brands, like, TCB punches above their weight. I think they might be better in some ways than some of the other more expensive brands. Uh, custom leather jacket makers, too. I would say, like, a something like Regis or Field Leathers is probably better than you know some of these like one-off shot jackets that are like sixteen hundred dollars or whatever they are right because you're getting custom so oh also like sugarcane the sugarcane 1947s i like those more than a lot of more expensive jeans so yeah i do think there's some examples like that where the cheaper option is better in a lot of cases no you know like it, it, it will be better i'd say with boots especially right now like I've, I've already talked about this, like high-end boots are like, I don't think high-end boots are in a good place right now. I really don't. Um, they're too expensive, the wait times are too long, the QC has gone down for all the best makers, basically, except for Goto, and except for Flame Panda, and probably NF, but all of those brands are, take way too long to get. Like the, the, the lower price brands that are more, it's getting more and more competitive, they're getting more good stuff coming out. So yeah, that, that's a big one, honestly. Like, I mean, if you ask me to take a pair of Parkhurst, 
you know, those look nicer to me than some of the more expensive brands. Even if there's some better internals in some ways than some of those higher end brands, like, but they're made like, they're, they're, the QC is so terrible. <laughs> so yeah, I do think there's some. Coffee Machines 101. Um, so it's a, if you're talking about espresso, that's the last one, by the way. If you're talking about espresso, uh, I think levers are the way to go. I am a lever guy. So, uh, this is the last one. So yeah, if you don't want to hear about coffee, then you can just click off now if you haven't already, which you probably already have. So, uh, I'm going to try to shoot some, I'm going to make coffee right now. I'm going to see if I can shoot it with my camera if I can, but yeah, uh, levers to me are the way to go. Um, I really love my ACS. ACS is really, they're getting kind of bigger now known if like you're in the espresso world. But like the features of the machine, it's not a cheap, they're not cheap machines, but like the Vostok and Vesuvius Evo Leva, the features that they give you compared to the price of like anything else that gives you something similar is amazing. Like the next step up from an ACS, which are like three to four, like three and a half to four and a half thousand dollars US, which I know is a lot. But the next step up is three times the price basically for an equivalent machine. And everybody now kind of is starting to understand that flat nine bar profiles are not good. Like I can't, I, I came from a flat nine bar machine where it just like gets you to nine or 11 bars or whatever. It says nine bars, but they're usually like 10 or 11. And it just keeps trying to hammer nine bars through and it's just not as good. You, you get a more bitter tasting coffee. The declining profile of a lever is amazing. And then the 54 millimeter group had the smaller group head really makes a difference too. Like you get more, I'm getting like these, in, in, I post this stuff and say, hey, yeah, I'm doing like these like filter roasts and I'm getting this insane crema and body. Like, cause the, it's yeah. Anyway, um, I'm gonna try to make a coffee, but yeah, I would say lever. Like there's a reason why all the guy, almost everybody who uses decents, like all the guys who use decents, like they're always doing lever profiles. They're all doing like the Lar Marzocco Levo profile, or they're doing the Londinium pro like Londinium profiles and stuff like that, or or Cremina profiles. Everybody who's using like decents most of the time, at least it seems like to me, they're all using lever profiles, because that's I don't know. I just I love levers. It's a bias. I'm not saying I'm not a coffee expert by any means, but like I'm very happy with what I'm getting. Like the upgrade I that this machine is is massive and then the cafetech grinder anyway i might cut a lot of this out but thank you anyway for you know all the stuff all the all the support and the um you know subscribers and the questions and everything i hope you got something out of this video i'm gonna see if i can shoot a coffee thing if this video is another five ten minutes or whatever then you'll know that's what happened if not thank you all very much for watching and i'll see you all next time